Hey there, today I want to talk about reverse sidebars. This is something that when I first started hearing the term and wanted to look into what they were and how they worked, I, I had a little trouble understanding. It took took a few tries because uh, for whatever reason it just wasn't coming, coming across over text for me. So um, I'm going to make this video with some visuals. So if we recall, a traditional sidebar is this, this, uh, this piece of metal that runs down the side of the plug and it sits in this channel, this groove, but the, you can see the, the face of the groove is kind of at a 45 degree angle and that, that matches with the slope face of the sidebar itself. So when you turn either using the key or with your tensioner, it some component of that, that force is pointed straight down into the plug and it forces the sidebar down. And when you're tensioning um, during picking, that's how you make the sidebar bind against the, the locking element inside is you turn and it pushes in a little bit until it hits whatever is in the way and then you can you can start looking for gates or or you know whatever whatever the mechanism is you can you can start picking but with a reverse sidebar instead of the sidebar being pushed out of the plug with the spring it's actually being pushed in so you insert the key. This is a this lock uh, I, I borrowed from Logan. Thank you very much, Logan. It's a Jishen K36. It's it's kind of a, a cool knockoff of a of an MT5 Plus, but with a re reverse sidebar, which is really kind of kind of cool. Because in theory, a reverse sidebar should be unpickable. Because if we compare it to compare it to the Primus. Because the spring is pushing it in, you don't need to use the groove in the lock housing itself. You can see that that sidebar groove, the the faces aren't sloped. They're it's fully 90 degrees. So when you're you apply a rotation, the sidebar goes straight in, and so it's it's you know normal to the direction that you want the the sidebar to move. So there's no component actually being forced up. Um, it's it's fully side to side so the sidebar just binds completely and, and it won't bind against the locking elements so you can't you can't actually pick by tensioning so that's why with say like the the quick set gen 3 which also has a reverse sidebar people talk about shimming it where you're you're um, tensioning the sidebar directly rather than with rotation but by shoving a thin piece of metal inside to press against the sidebar and that allows you to start binding um, so, one thing that took me a minute to wrap my head around, which you might be wondering, is if the sidebar is constantly being pushed in by a spring, then isn't that automatically binding the against the sliders or the um, the wafers or whatever finger pins? Um, and the answer is yes, very slightly, which is why these are sprung. And the spring pushing these sliders back to their resting position needs to be strong enough to overcome um, the, the, the spring pushing the sidebar down into the gate of, so it doesn't just set itself. And this, this lock, actually, this Jishen, is it's kind of interesting. Um, it's not quite the case. You can, you can actually set some of these. There, that one's set. And that's, that's with me not touching the sidebar, you can see. Got a little bit of jiggle there, um, and that's that. I'm not sure if that's because this sidebar spring is too strong, or if it's the geometry of the gates; they just don't slip out. But you can see that any disturbance on the sidebar, if you have one that's set, come over and try and set another, it it'll kind of slip back out. Um, let's take a look at the. I mean, that's that's basically it for a a reverse sidebar. Uh, you can stop the video right here if you want, but I'm gonna also look at the Quick Set Gen 3 because this one, um, this one I borrowed from Red Wanderer. Thanks, dude. Um, it's probably the most the most common reverse sidebar lock that that people are gonna get here in the U.S. anyway. Um, and I've never picked one, never had the desire, but it is kind of a cool lock. So I'm going to, and again, you can see the channel. The groove for the sidebar is not sloped, it's 90 degrees. 
the sidebar itself is squared so you can't tension it and you can see this lock has been picked a bunch so there's that little damage to the face of the plug that's where people are shoving shims inside to just directly press on the sidebar to force it to bind um, but again you insert the key and the sidebar retracts and that allows oh there we go you can see it pops out pops in and uh, these ones I'm actually going to show how these work so we've got these are the the wafers I'm having a lot of focus issues right now this is annoying so these are the wafers you can see those those little saw teeth on the upper left corner um, those those are what allow you to rekey the lock and this is the the true gate for the sidebar to fall into and these these uh, shallower marks are false gates and the way this works is you can see these these are the little fingers that actually engage with those um, those uh, I guess it's like bidding serrations but you've got these little fins that stick out and those grab onto the, the sliders or wafers I guess but these these are the springs I'm talking about that um, these will overpower the the spring um, that's pushing the sidebar in and you can see where the the gate for the sidebar is is sloped so um, the, the spring is able to push these out of the way and and jump out of the gate um, so that's it for reverse sidebars um, thank you and have a good day